Hello, my name is Jeff Johnson. I am a partner and CPA with Whipley LLP, a CPA and consulting firm. Our national healthcare practice provides services to hospitals, health systems, senior living facilities, and medical practices by providing innovative solutions to demanding healthcare issues. I am based in our Spokane, Washington office and have more than 20 years experience working with hospitals and physician practices, including critical access hospitals, rural health clinics, and federally qualified health centers. Thank you for taking out time today to listen to this 15 minute or so session on understanding the top 10 key financial indicators that critical access hospital executives should know. We cannot begin to cover every aspect of the key financial ratios and what they mean, but we can at least provide a basis for you to begin to understand them and interpret their meaning. Our purpose for this session is to provide you with a consistent definition of important key financial ratios for critical access hospitals, understand how to interpret the ratios, what role using external benchmarks has in understanding your financial position, and to provide additional resources to benchmarks. The purpose of this slide is to get you thinking on how you view your operations and make decisions. We should be looking at operations and making decisions based on the continuum of care, which is the future of healthcare. However, we also need to make sure we understand the financial ramifications of those decisions in a cost reimbursed environment. Future payment methods will be bundled. However, hospitals must keep in mind the reality of current reimbursement methods to generate enough margin to carry out their missions. Some key questions to include are, what services or service lines should you offer in your hospital? Can you build a new service in your market area that can be easily implemented with the right resources? What services are currently going elsewhere? My colleague, Jane Jerzak, dives a little deeper on service line planning in another session. I would encourage you to listen to that recording. No matter the approach or the strategic direction your facility decides to move, it is important to understand financial ratios which provide insight to the operations of your facility. This understanding can help you to evaluate if your organization is profitable or needs to improve operations, generate cash for additional capital investments, or secure financing. Benchmarking can provide a tool to establish targets to help your organization in achieving its performance goals and help you get to that go or no go decision to move forward or plan for the future. This slide provides a summary of the process used in benchmarking or measuring performance. Organizations can track progress for a variety of financial, operational, and quality indicators against both internal and external metrics. The key is identifying a metric to benchmark, whether it's internal or external. As you can see by the summary chart, not using some sort of benchmarking creates a reactive culture that limits innovative thinking, especially in the wake of healthcare reform. Without measuring performance, how do you know if the organization is performing at its greatest potential? Now I want to discuss the top 10 critical access hospital key financial indicators. In June of 2012, several healthcare financial leaders, including CPAs and consultants representing firms with expertise in critical access hospital operations, representatives from critical access hospitals and officials from the Federal Office of Rural Health Policy met in Minneapolis, Minnesota to identify and come to agreement on the top 10 key financial indicators that critical access hospitals should monitor. This effort was led by the National Rural Health Resource Center, and I was honored to be part of that discussion. We identified the metric, defined it based on industry norms, including the flex monitoring team's definition, and the desired position relative to the median. Should it be increasing or decreasing? We came up with the following key indicators that I will now walk you through. The definition will be on each slide. My goal is to provide you with 
why the ratio is important, and how to interpret it. The median benchmark identified in each key financial indicator is from the FLEX monitoring team reporting, which is an organization funded by the Federal Office of Rural Health Policy to monitor the FLEX program or the Critical Access Hospital program. They issue a report annually that provides financial and other operational metrics, primarily from Medicare cost report data and other sources. Okay, days cash on hand. This metric measures the number of days an organization could operate if no additional cash came in the door. The ratio is important as lenders view this as a critical ratio for financing new projects and providing you cushion in the event the organization experiences a downturn in their census or volume. Those organizations that had high days cash on hand that have high days cash on hand are able to weather changes in economic conditions or temporary drops in, in census or volume. Some organizations categorize days cash on hand into two categories, short term and all sources. This slide illustrates the formula for all sources. The difference being that investments such as funded depreciation and or board designated initiatives are included in all sources. Although the median is 69 days based on the latest available flex monitoring survey data, most lenders like to see days in excess of 90 days. Days and net, net accounts receivable measures the number of days it takes an organization to collect its payments. The lower the days, the better. Common problems to higher days include out of date charge masters, poor registration processes, and bad communications within the business office. We have seen temporary increases in days due to implementation, implementations of EHRs. However, we are now seeing some improved days from previous benchmarks as, as a result of EHR implementations once they are operate, operationalized and adopted by the physicians and staff of the hospital. Days in net accounts receivable is a good measure of how the billing process is working. However, it does not indicate the hospital's overall financial strength. Net AR includes adjustments for management estimates of amounts and gross accounts receivable to adjust to what we call net realizable value or net AR. For example, if an MRI charge on a Medicare patient account is $1,500 and that amount is included in gross AR, management would then apply the ratio of cost of charges of 40%, assuming 40%, management will allow 60% of the Medicare charges as a contractual, just, contractual discount. So that the real amount of the AR or the net AR is $600 or 40% based on your ratio of cost of charge or your payment amount times the $1,500, the gross charge. Days and gross accounts receivable test the net days in accounts receivable with a goal of being relatively the same amount of time as net days in accounts receivable. Gross and net days are close in value in highly functioning business offices. Similar characteristics as net accounts receivable are included in gross, except that, as mentioned before, gross accounts receivable does not include any accounting adjustments which makes it a good measure of overall performance when compared to net days and accounts receivable. The Flex Monitoring Team does not publish gross AR days. However, based on other databases, it should be between 55 and 60 days. Total margin measures the control of expenses relative to revenue. Total margin includes operating revenues, operating expenses, and other non-operating revenues such as contributions or tax revenues for governmental and district hospitals. A consistent total margin year after year is a good indicator of financial strength.
While total margin is a good indicator of financial strength, it is important to look at operating margin as well. An, or an organization may have a high total margin ratio, but a low, sometimes negative operating margin. For example, some organizations may be the recipient of significant non-operating sources of revenue, such as county tax revenues or contributions, as previously noted. For governmental and district hospitals, the difference between total margin and operating margin is often the tax revenues netted against any interest expense on debt. For those hospitals that are district hospitals or governmental hospitals, margin driven by supplemental funding sources such as property taxes and sales taxes may be at risk with more pressure on local and county government cuts to balance budgets. Debt service coverage ratio measures the ability to pay obligations related to long-term debt. The measure reflects the availability of cash flow from operations after debt obligations have been satisfied. The debt service coverage represents a key ratio in determining the ability of an organization to take on additional debt, whether for IT, such as EHR systems, equipment, or building projects. Long-term debt to capitalization measures the percentage of net assets or net position, or otherwise known as the equity of the organization, as it relates to that debt. The ratio, the ratio measures the amount of capital that is financed with debt, which is important to lenders for the long-term viability of the organization. Higher values signify a riskier situation and may have, and may have a harder time sustaining debt payments in the future and or getting financing from lenders. For those of you that have issued debt for significant renovations or replacement hospitals, your ratio is likely in excess of 50% compared to the national median of critical access hospitals of just over 17% based on the 2013 data. Average age of plant measures the average age in years of the buildings and the equipment of the organization. Lower decreasing values indicate a newer facility or more frequent investments in the buildings or equipment over time. The status of newer facilities has shown to have a positive effect on the recruitment and retention of physicians and staff. Salaries to net patient revenue measures labor costs relative to the generation of operating revenue from patient care. The ratio purposely does not include fringe benefits as benefits can vary widely. The ratio is pretty straightforward and is an indicator that may lead to an evaluation of staffing efficiencies if significantly above the median of approximately 46%. Payer mix percentage is the proportion of patients represented by each payer type. For example, Medicare, Medicaid, managed care, commercial insurance, or self-pay. Often, this ratio is reported for the entire hospital. However, if presented for both inpatient and outpatient, they are computed differently. Payer mix percentages are particularly important in estimating provider revenue because the final reimbursement amount for any patient ultimately depends on the payment source. Finally, the following is a list of resources that provide financial and operational benchmarks for critical access hospitals. Please reach out to the National Rural Health Resource Center or WIFLI if you are interested in learning more about these various resources. I do wanna thank you for allowing me to share this brief time with you to learn about the value of benchmarking and more specifically the top 10 key financial indicators for critical access hospitals. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact me at the information included on the slide. Thank you and have a great day.